Well, good day, everyone, everywhere, and special greetings to all those seated in heavenly places in Jesus, our Messiah. The name of this broadcast is Cross the Border, and today is a Prophecy Reality Edition. Yes, we are live in the studio, and the studio cam is on. Uh, we The chat room is open, so come on over to FirstAmendmentRadio.net, click on the chat button, and join us there. Okay, what are we going to talk about this morning? Hmm, uh, there's a lot of ideas about uh, prophecy, and most of them are wrong out there. Uh, most popular thing is the, is the dispensational, left-behind eschatology of the day, where everyone believes that they're going to be raptured away uh, seven years before the resurrection. And while they're away, then this the Antichrist is going to appear, and nobody can know who he is right now, and uh, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, we can guess and play games, but nobody can know who the Antichrist is until this rapture happens, and all of the true believers in Christ will be taken away for seven years, and the Antichrist will have his rule and reign over the earth for seven years. Now that's the dispensational left behind eschatology, and it's all wrong. Sorry, no rapture. There is a resurrection. They call that the great, their, that's their great tribulation. And they take all of the catastrophe and all of the curses and everything that's in the book of Revelation that they don't like and they don't want to happen to them. That's why they need to be raptured out before it happens. And they want to put it all into this seven year period when the unknown Antichrist character is going to suddenly appear and rule the whole world. Fantasy, that's what that is. Now we have, we have 600, 700 years of church history, uh, of the Reformed Church and Pre-Reformation Church, absolutely, uh, without a doubt, vociferously identifying that great apostasy spoken of by Paul in Thessalonians chapter 2, and that man of sin, whom we also call the Antichrist. Now, there are many Antichrists, yes, but that man of sin is one character, and uh, he is the Antichrist character, the Antichrist of Antichrists, in the same way that Jesus is the King of Kings. He is the man of sin, and he was outed and identified five, six, seven hundred years ago by the pre-Reformation and Reformation Fathers. No doubt about it. Uh, also, I was listening to uh, Rick Wiles on True News, and I've sent him copies of my late books and everything, and I had never even got a an acknowledgement or a thank you or even a not, you're out of your mind from him. It probably threw them all in the trash. <laughs> because he certainly uh, doesn't seem like he read them. Because uh, I heard uh, that... The, Recently, he said that he's going to write 45 books over the next 15 years because he's always wanted to be an author. It's like his dream. I think Rick should stick to the news because uh, he gave us a little clue. Uh, the, I believe it was yesterday or the day before on his broadcast of what he's going to write about. Yes, he's now identified the Antichrist. The Antichrist is uh, not according to what the uh, the church fathers have said over the last five, six, seven hundred years, and then it identified uh, the Antichrist or the man of sin, but no, specifically said beast. So he didn't say who the Antichrist would be, uh, the character, or who the man of sin is. Uh, although if he read the books I sent him and, uh, and really studied historical writings of the church and knew much about history, uh, he wouldn't say the thing that he's saying. But he's identified the fourth beast, and he explicitly stated that the fourth beast is not Rome, okay? So obviously he's not paying any attention to uh, Daniel chapter 2 or Daniel uh, chapter 7 and 8 uh, at all to, to find out what a beast is. Because if you go to the prophetic or apocalyptic understanding of what the scripture calls a beast, well, it's not going to be what Rick Weil says it is. He says it's going to be the global brain. It's not 
Yeah, it's not the Roman Empire. Explicitly stated that the fourth beast, he didn't say where he got fourth beast from, but you only find fourth beasts in Daniel. Uh, you don't find fourth beast in Revelation, although you do see the mention of the Daniel fourth beast in the book of Revelation. But the term fourth and four beasts is uh, strictly out of Daniel. And those four beasts are enumerated in history, beginning with Babylon and every uh, world conquering or empire that rose up out of that locality uh, there in the old world. Uh, not ex Now, explicitly, Rome isn't explicitly named, but it is, ne it is the next one consecutively in order of the prophecy uh, and of those that are named. So how he could say, it's, now suddenly, it's not going to be world-dominating power in the old world theater or the sea where the uh, other three beasts of those four beasts rose up. He's saying now it's going to be something totally different. So what he's really saying is that it's not going to be a beast because wouldn't God, he would call it something else in the prophecy if it was going to be something else other than what the three previous explicitly named beasts were or are. I mean, named by name. So we know what a beast is because God has named uh, the ones that were history at the time that the prophecies were written. He named those beasts. So any beast that rose up after those beasts had to be the same kind of thing. Otherwise, we have confusion. So it can't be a global brain. <laughs> Because that would be something else. God would have to use another term. And what would he draw on to, to you know, because he's been going to these conferences and stuff. So he's getting all brand new ideas about how to interpret prophecy. He's not going to the scripture itself and drawing out from the scripture, to using scripture to interpret scripture. Because if you use scripture to interpret scripture, you're never going to get global brain for the interpretation of a beast. You're going to get what has been explicitly named as beast, and you'll find something of the same kind to fill in for the future beast that is unnamed. But if you follow the, the, the course of the prophecy, it is obvious that it is the Roman Empire, and that it changes and, and morphs over time into something that is unrecognizable as to being exactly what it was in its beginning. But all of those morphs and changes are there in the scripture too, so that you can follow them out through history. So when people come up with uh, new ideas, well, go to the scripture and ask them, where, where do you find global brain? How do you get that out of the scripture? And they can't. See, this is people reaching into their own heart and their own mind for an interpretation of the scripture. And you know, that's where most prophecy pundits are today. Rather than going through history, going through the Bible in history, looking for the interpretation of these apocalyptic phrases and terms from the Bible itself, well, they try to fit it onto something that they think is going to happen or something that they're involved with in the day, like he's going to all these conferences and talking about a global brain and the, you know, the 5G and all this stuff and how everything's going to be interconnected. And yes, the Antichrist is going to use whatever tools he can uh, to put his end time mark of the beast scenario together. So, Rick Wiles should stick to the news and hopefully he won't get time to write his 45 books. <laughs> but hopefully he'll keep busy with the news that he has before he could, you know, do that much damage to the body of Christ. Uh, anyway, or, you know, I pray for him, you know, and I ask Heavenly Father to open his eyes so that he isn't unwittingly a uh, shadow government or Jesuit coadjutor covering for the true Antichrist by coming up with another theory of a future unknown Antichrist, but trying to identify it as something other, or the beast, the final beast as something other than what it actually is, 
or what the scripture interprets itself uh, to be. Um, so, so if, you know, and, and I ask everyone to pray continually every day for all of the broadcasts here on First Amendment Radio, that they be worthy of the support that the Heavenly Father sends our way uh, to for the work that needs to be done in His kingdom to bring the elect to a right knowledge of the gospel and the gospel message and world event and what's going on around us to, you know, uh, so that we can quit all of the confusion and uh, join the body of, uh, of his saints that have an idea, that have their minds enlightened to understand God's word or, and to, to be honest about what they don't understand. Because, you know, I, I look at the last, uh, 10 years. It's been, I think it's been over like 12 years now since I did a Bible study on the Revelation. And so you're going to want to stick around for that because I am going to redo. And I should say, the last Bible study I did on the Revelation, you know, it was okay for someone who didn't have knowledge, perhaps, (laughs) because a lot of time all I could say is I don't know. But I've learned a lot over the past 10, 12 years since I did that study. So in the second hour here, you want to stick around for that. We're going to go into part 10 of the shadow government works for the Antichrist. And uh, in that chapter, uh, chapter 10, um, is called uh, The Restoration of the Inquisition. So we're going to talk a lot about uh, how the Inquisition was restored to the shadow government for its operation. They had Inquisitions before the shadow government was formed. But they were restored to this newly formed shadow government that works for the Antichrist. So you want to stick around for uh, chapter 10 or part 10 of that. Uh, like I said, it, it beginning in our second hour. And uh, I have like a couple more parts. I have a part at 11. And then for, for part 12, we're going to do a... Well, you'll have to stick around for the closing part 12 of that. And then after that, that's when I'm going to jump in. And I'm going to go through the entire book of Revelation. And we're going to cover um, what the historical interpretation is, uh, what the different views are uh, in the true Reformed Church uh, and the infant church uh, as they were applied rightly to the Scripture. And uh, there's a little variation there, so we're going to cover some of the variation. But we're going to try to give you the best, the meat of it all so that you can uh and because i've been chewing on the the it all for uh many years but they say you know eat the meat and spit out the fat and the bones and so that's basically what we want to do i think i've uh we're going to do a study having already eliminated uh most of the fat and the bones but going to get directly to the meat and what more lines up with apocalyptic uh, scriptural interpretation than anything else. No, there would be no global brains <laughs> and no end time antichrist that's suddenly going to appear. There's going to be no rapture and seven year tribulation in our interpretation of the scripture and of the uh, book of Revelation. But we're going to get to uh, the true, what the scripture really says and what history reveals using what uh, the apocalyptic uh, symbols and so forth as they're exposed and interpreted by the scripture itself. So you want to stick around for that coming uh, in the near future. And we're going to talk about some of the inquisitions of recent history and where they came from and so forth. Uh, what's happened uh, Pol Pot and uh, Stalin and other uh communist rulers of the world and their terrible slaughters and uh we'll tie them into the shadow government a little bit so you can you know where to look and all of this is available at your fingertips because we do have access to the global brain or should i say the internet of the global brain yeah what a catchy phrase yeah we can run with that one um, let's see, Jeremy in the in the chat room, and good morning to the few people that have showed up. Uh, we have Voyager, Jeremy, uh, Blessed, 
and Judy just joined the chat room. And uh, you can join too, but... Uh, and if you have any questions, like Jeremy says, uh, Nicholas, can you talk about the King James Version Olinleyism craze? That is the King James Version being a perfect translation. And, uh, well, the craze continues because it's been going on for many, many years. And it all sounds good when you start, they first start at it. But, you know, um, I, I love the King James Version. And it's the version of the Bible that I use, the authorized King James Version. And I believe that it is the best English version that we have. You know, best version available for the English-speaking people in the world. And I say that because I believe that's true. Because I believe that our shadow government has helped to create a lot of, uh, well, what I call is the Antichrist versions out there to water down the Bible because, you know, what the, the Antichrist says if, and his shadow government says, if, well, if you can't beat them, join them. And they couldn't burn all the Bible, so they decided to uh, to water them down and change them a little bit. So you got to be aware of all these other new versions. So I would want to say that the King James, uh, authorized King James Version, is the best version for the English-speaking people out there. And if I was going to tra translate into another language, I guess I would do it from the King James Version. Okay. That being said, uh, the King James Version onlyism is a, a, an extreme craze where they say that even over the Hebrew and the Greek, uh, the original texts, the King James Version. Well, that's not right. I use a, a tool like uh, eSword. You can get that from e-sword.net, and you can download it. And when you download the program, you get the authorized King James Version and the Greek and Hebrew with it, and you can compare, and it's a great study tool if you use it properly. Now, you don't go, well, look at each word, and you look at the way, and you look at the Hebrew or the, what, what do you call it, Strong's translation, and it'll have a selection of interpretation into English for that word where it's used differently in different scriptures. You can't, it's not a pick and choose. Okay. You have to look at context is very important with the King James Version. And, you know, Jeremy says, is the King James Version watered down at all? And it is a translation of the original text. That's why we use the tool the Strong's Hebrew and Greek Concordance. And what you do is you look at the way a word is used throughout the scripture. You can you consider the context in which that word is being used to understand what the definition of that Greek or Hebrew word is in the instance where it is being translated. And is it watered down at all? Well, that's that's debatable. Okay, I'm going to say that's debatable. My statement, and I'm going to stick with this, Jeremy, is that it is the best translation available for the English-speaking people. And I'm going to let it rest there, because here's what's important. You could even use one, it's one of these Jesuit versions, and the Spirit of God, because the Word of God is there, the Spirit of God can work through it. People have been saved without the Bible, just hearing the Word come out of someone's mouth, and that not very well. Okay, so it's without the spirit, it doesn't matter what translation you have. It's a dead letter. But all that being said, and to answer your question the best I can, all I'm going to say is it is the best English translation available. That's it. And it's to be preferred over all the others. The true word of God is spirit led. It's what the. It's what God gave to those that wrote it in the language in which he, it was given in. And, uh, but the Spirit of God, if the Spirit, of, if you have the Spirit of God, then you have the Word of God, uh, whatever translation. And if you don't have the Spirit of God, well, you're going to be misled anyway. So anyway, that's about all I'm going to say about that. I think that's, that should be enough. Uh, I hope it is. Um, if anyone has any specific questions about a certain passage or so forth, you know, I'd be glad to give you my two cents on what I feel the, the Spirit is saying there. Um, that's why I do these Bible broadcasts and, and do these Bible studies. 
We'll be back in a few minutes and uh, we'll continue the discussion uh, on uh, the shadow government uh, that rules for the Antichrist. And in the next session, we'll jump into part 10. Okay, don't go anywhere. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on satellite, internet, or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening.